Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? This is DMC in the place to be, and the only place for you to ever be is right there, rocking and rolling, hipping and hopping with Mitch LaFon and Jeremy White on the Mitch LaFon and Jeremy White show. The only place for you to go. An all-new episode of the Mitch LaFon and Jeremy White show. Tuesday at noon. Available wherever you stream. People. But I, if, if I never had rock and roll and hip hop in my life, you would have never knew Daryl McDaniels exists. Yeah. yeah. Talk about that. I was, I was, you know, obviously with the Aerosmith connection and everything, I mean, had it not been for you, I really feel that maybe Aerosmith would have just dissolved by the late 80s. Oh, well, I, I, well, I, yeah, well, well, yeah, well, well. Listen, hold on. Let me speak to it real quick. Okay. I was an Aerosmith it. fan. Wow. I love Done With Mirrors, but it, it was diminishing returns. It was diminishing returns. And then I saw on CNN, uh, Run DMC and uh, Aerosmith are collaborating. I saw, and I was like, really? <laughs> and it came out like two months really? later or whatever. Right. And it, it changed it. As an Aerosmith fan of the uh -huh. day, you just went, fuck yeah. That's wow. another level. And, and Wow, really? Uh, to, me, to me, you saved them. And I'm an Aerosmith fan from like 75. Well, they say that. They, they said it, Steve and Joe. They all admitted it. What, what it was was this. They were so far gone. Like, I didn't know that this song was Walk This Way. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the band was Aerosmith. My thing was, get the album with the toys on the cover and play number four so I could rhyme over the beat and guitar. I had never heard the lyrics and nothing like that. Because the DJs used to scratch out the title of this song so the rival DJs wouldn't know the beat. No so, way. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, because if you play in the beat and your MC is rhyming over this, this, that you send a spy. Yo, go over there by the turntables, act like you ain't looking and see if you can get the name of that. So the other DJ, all they got to do is go to the record store and buy the vinyl and get it too. So the thing, so I didn't know it was Walk This Way. And me and Run, up until we had to go learn the record, we never heard them singing to it. It was just the beat, the beat. The, the, the Aerosmith Walk This Way break was a break beat for us. Hmm. But the, the yeah. Aerosmith thing was, we didn't know about them. Like even when, when, when you said, you people started seeing the video on MTV. Most of our fans was like this. The Aerosmith fans was like, yo, what the hell is Aerosmith doing with the new rap guys from DMC? That was no, because we had Rockbox and King of Rock before that. So yeah. people knew about it. So what the hell is Aerosmith doing with the new rap get thing? The new rap guys doing the thing that's not going to be here because it's a fad in a couple of years. What are they doing? But most of our fans was like, oh shit, what the hell is Aerosmith doing with the Rolling Stones? Because <laughs> they knew, you know, songs were huge. We knew, you know what I'm saying, Miss You and all of that. So Aerosmith, from what I understand from fans such as yourself, yep. they were so far gone, gone after bad shows and just bad reputation that here's the joke. They could have made a record with God, Moses, and Jesus, and nobody would have cared. Yeah, true. Absolutely. <laughs> no, Aerosmith Absolutely. is God and but no. Like that, that's how far they go. I'm talking about that's God, that's Moses. So what? But they came with Run DMC and we changed their lives and changed music history. Yeah. Without Listen, even thinking, the, the original version was me and one rhyming about how great we were. It was right. Rick Rubin who suggested we do the record over the way they did. And, and I gotta say, the video was the one that captured me because you see, yes. you know, you're, you're doing your thing and they break through the wall. Yep. And as an Aerosmith fan, I was like, yeah, you tell them, you, you show them how it's, and it was right. fun and right. it was hilarious. And, and, but it and, was real. It was yes. actually literal. The removing of the world of separating rock from rap, the black people from the white people, bringing two genres, generation and sounds together. Right. It was brilliant. And we didn't know we, it was just something the rappers was doing. Like if we would have just did it over, our way, me and Run Rhyming on it, nobody would have cared. The yeah. only people that knew it was Aerosmith, they sampled Aerosmith walk this way. Oh, I just thought it was Toys in the Attic. That's what we used to call it. It's Toys in the Attic to us. Or if me and Run would have did it over by ourselves the way they originally did it, it would have been all right. But the fact that we did it with them yeah. is the thing that changed the world. Me and Run could have did their song just me and run us. 
wouldn't have did nothing. The fact I agree. that we did it with them was the groundbreaking, changing thing. Well, listen, listen. I, had you done it alone, I don't, I don't think I would have cared at all. <laughs> Honestly, I, and I'm not at trying all. to be nasty. I just we would like, only, we wouldn't have did it alone. It was Rick who said that. Me and Run was still totally against it. Even the version that you're here, me and Run said, me and Run thought we had power because what's the name of the motherfucking group? Run DMC. Problem. We said, don't put that record out as a single. They put it out as a single behind our backs. Wow. Well, they, they gave you a career, so you should thank yes, them. Yes, they did. No, no. It's it definitely, yeah. <laughs> they, so they definitely did. And was then was public never, tried never, to imitate you with Anthrax, but there was nothing like the original. Nothing I know. Like I mean, yeah, we got it. But that was cool because <laughs> we was working in the same, um, um, we was ro- working in Chung King House of Metal. So Anthrax, Slayer, and the legendary Beastie Boys were working in the studio. We were the only rappers in Chung King at the time. And then later on came LL and Heavy D and everybody from Def Jam. So we would see them in the hallway and this and that. We'd see Rick, but we never spoke. It was until one day, Rick's, you know, hey, how you doing? How you doing? One day, Rick stuck his head in the studio and Jay said, come on in. That was the game changer. Wow. You talk about rock and metal a whole lot. I mean, like, you love the genre, but I never hear you talk about any of the 80s melodic hard rock bands that were around at the time, like Def Leppard and Motley Crue. I wasn't into those guys. No. I was I was only into rock at the time that I heard on a cool Herc tape. What's that right. song? All right, let me go find it. Another one by Sedest. Let me go find it. Uh, we were rocking. Let me go find that. Um, 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 Tom Sawyer by Rush. Let me go find ah. that. And it wasn't until I started focusing on rock that well before that before the hip hop it was seventies rock radio. Okay. That was my attraction that made me don't care about disco, don't care about afros and dashikis and high heel, could care less about Superfly and all those motherfuckers. Dude, yeah. Don't care about John Shaft. I want to know more about in the town where I was born, lived a man who sailed the sea, right. and he lay all living in the earth. It was just more storytelling me. Child is born just the other day, cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. That's why I sampled that later, not knowing I had a connection there. Um, all the Led Zeppelin, it was just something about BC sample when the levee breaks. Boosh. Gash, boosh, boosh, gash, boosh, brrrr, and then the guy still singing. I love that over, you know, hey, sexy lady, what the fuck? <laughs> Let's make love, what the hell? Let no, I you. want. I, I got want, my scorpions. Uh, got my scorpion yeah, shirt on. Which, 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 which scorpions are you loving? The, the, got- the reason why I didn't pay attention to 80s rock until Guns N' Roses came along. Mm. Not even Van but, Halen? Were you into the into Van Halen at all? I knew Jump. No, I wasn't into the, the Van and them yet. Mm-hmm. Right. I, after after I'm in the rock, I'm in the 70s rock radio. I, I wasn't into the Scorpion hair bands because I'm on MTV with them. Right. Yeah. So I'm doing Rock Pox and King of Rock. I'm doing my own. Once I started frequenting the places of these guys, I started paying more attention. Oh, let me see what this Bruce Springsteen guy is about. Let me see what... And then... People would say, y'all didn't walk this way over, but you need to go listen to MC5. Like, once I got into, even to this day, to this day, I discovered um, uh, I discovered Motorhead from a 12-year-old white kid. DMC, I heard you like this. He told me, go listen to Lemmy and them. And I had heard some of them songs. But, you know, rock, when you discover rock in metal, you got to listen to the songs that weren't singles. Right, just the albums and and that's where I got. That's where I started. Yeah, I thought Pink, people laughed at me for the longest because I only knew the music. I thought Pink Floyd was one dude. <laughs> you thought Floyd was Pink <laughs> until like probably like eighty eight or something. Wow. I just showed you the dark side of the moon. I thought it was the guy, the, the leader of a band. You know, it's a lot of them. Yeah. But I thought, I didn't know Pink Floyd was a whole damn band. What are y'all doing? So, <laughs> rock, I'm so the, yeah, the reason why I love metal and rock right now is because it's always a new discovery for me. It never gets boring. Yeah. Really I didn't happens. know. I just found out the Pantera lead singer got assassinated the same year. Is that true? Well, no, the, the, uh, the, the, the guitarist. Yes, player. got assassinated mm-hmm. on stage the same year John Lennon got killed. 
Not the same year. It uh, wasn't the same, same day. The same day. The same day. Both yes. both December eighth, but about same day. Yes. twenty See, just twenty five years what? apart. Oh my! Like what? It's crazy. So it's little things like that. Like uh, I've always heard the songs, and seventies rock radio is is first for me. Mm -hmm. Then a little bit of disco. I only like disco because two of the biggest rock bands on earth had to make disco songs. Queen made another one by Sedust and the Rolling Stones made Miss You. So it was always some rock that kept, kept me interested. That, that kept like, interested. Yeah, when, in the 90s, when Jay wanted Run DMC to do New Jack Swing, I was totally lost. Oh, yeah. That was part <laughs> of the reason why I was suicidal. Because I was scared to say, this is bullshit, and I quit. Wow. So you never worked yeah. with like Teddy Riley and those guys? And nothing against them. We did two songs, Faces and Paws. And Paws was all right. Some of my fans said Paws was all right. That's because my rhyme was tight. Mm -hmm. But da -da -da, I was, Bobby Brown does that. What the fuck are y'all doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to do what Motorhead and Rage is doing. <laughs> like, Hold so. On. An all new episode of the Mitchell Fine and Jeremy White Show. Tuesday at noon. Available wherever you stream.